Hello, and welcome back to White Noise Level 3 Podcast. This is Tiwanaku coming at you live from sunny South Florida. And I hope you like the intro music. It is called Kill, Kill, Kill by Coyote Hearing. (laughs) Um, Not that it should be related to what we're talking about today. I just liked it. It's different. I almost didn't play it, but then I thought, hey, my listeners are pretty hip and they can handle it. So the title of this podcast is, wait, I think these parents are related. (laughs) So I'll probably, you know, have offshoots about this topic as I already have, but it is just mind boggling. Uh, And mind you, even though I am in research, I did not Google search this. All of this is coming from uh, personal experience or uh, or just uh, being inundated from this information. So I'm watching the news, the international news, mind you, and it is featuring this poor man who donated sperm when he was much younger in college. He was under the impression that there was a limit to the number of times his sperm would be uh, siring uh, other, you know, babies. And it, he turns to um, find out that he is the bio dad of 160 children. So how does he know this? Because you just send in your DNA for a price in these ancestry type sites and you get this family tree with chat capabilities. So we will talk about that in a second. Um, That is how he found out that he is the proud father of 160 children. Um, Apparently, that is way beyond the limit of what he had signed up for. um, I don't know, 30, 40 years ago. But that uh, sperm bank is probably for profit and is just out trying to make a buck. And who knows if they're even around anymore. I'm also sure that they're probably an LLC, a limited liability company. So even if you were to turn around and see them, uh, first of all, the kids are living and breathing. (laughs) It's not like they can go back into the womb. And uh, secondly, I'm not sure how much you would get from the settlement. Anyway, um, now let's just project this. So let's say that this is a small town, okay? Um, There's a big chance that the bio dad or the baby mom could be related. And we're not talking about seven degrees of separation. We're talking about half brother, half sister. (sighs) I mean, I... Don't know what I would do if I'm out shopping for the groceries in the morning, like I did this morning, um, trying to get ready for Thanksgiving, although I'm cooking chicken, I might have another podcast about that. And uh, suddenly, you get a little pop up on your phone. And it says, Hi, uh, I'm your long lost half brother, we're related. Uh, Just that thought alone, honestly, makes me nauseous. Um, I'm coming from the uh, privilege of a firstborn of two parents, uh, 50 years of 50 plus, 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 plus. Um, I've lost count. I don't know, maybe 55, 56 years of marriage. Uh, And I would be revolted if there was, if I found any, anyone, uh, any kind of surprise um, family member at, at this point, at any point, but at, at this point in my life, Uh, I remember reading that uh, Gwen Stefani, who had just married the lead singer of Bush, and I'm sorry, I forgot his name, but he's gorgeous. That's how I know about it. I was kind of following their their marriage and their divorce. But uh, just newly married, uh, this 16-year-old daughter comes forward and says she's the long-lost daughter of the husband of the lead singer of Bush. And it turned out to be true. Surprise! I mean, 
I'm divorced, so it must have killed us already. But, you know, the first couple of years of marriage are hard enough anyway, not to have, I mean, somebody like that walk into the room. Um, then imagine that you have a problem with your pregnancy. And oh, it turns out that, oops, you're married to your half brother or your half sibling, you know, your half sister. Um, that would be called inbreeding with all of the associated complications, like uh, birthing a child who is a hemophiliac. <laughs> if uh, there aren't any complications, you know, um, to bring the child into the world itself uh, in the first place. I mean, it's just simply not done. And it hadn't been done, um, except for the fact that now everybody knows about it because of the family tree <laughs> that's online. Um, this is also a true story, another one here. Um, a friend of mine is really into this, and uh, I'm guessing it's kind of a snowball effect. <laughs> Like, hey, you know, half of our family has participated. We're trying to grow our family tree on this uh, website. Why don't you send in, you know, you're part of the family. Why don't you send in your DNA and, you know, really become part of it? So I think it's kind of this pressure and snowball effect. <laughs> but in this case, it deals with the topic of inheritance. The um, One of the family members, an older gentleman, passed away and he has um, somewhat of an illegitimate daughter. Well, the mistake baby uh, wants her cut uh, of the inheritance and also to be invited to the funeral. So deal with that. Now, uh, I was also just reading uh, the last a book that I had finished reading called Runaway. Um, spoiler alert. <laughs> Uh, a mother kills her son, but she is unaware that it is her son. Uh, again, dealing with this whole, like, some people know, some people don't know who you're really related to uh, situation. And then uh, the father and the daughter are wondering, should we tell mom or not? <laughs> I mean, it just cannot get any better than this. The secrets in the closet are now fully exposed. <laughs> and I'm sure these... Ancestry sites have premium features. So, you know, for a price, you can search beyond your family tree and find out, you know, things about anyone you want, you know, for a price, which would be interesting with this crowded election, for example, presidential election. Um, so I know, I know most of you knew that I was, what I was talking about. I just live in a, <laughs> I just live in an area where, you know, people are not the brightest light on the Christmas tree. So I have to clarify for some people, don't block me. Um, then, um, I'm sure you've seen the ancestry.com commercials of this glowing, uh, single white female, um, saying that she is related to George Washington. Imagine that. I'm, I wonder how many really are, you know, is it a hundred? Is it a thousand? Is it really true? Um, maybe I'm seven degrees of separation from Lady Gaga. <laughs> maybe I should do a commercial. Uh, I would rather be caught. I, I would rather be dead than to send my DNA to one of these like crack sites. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're in it for profit. They don't care what happens. They don't care who they expose or why or, you know, anything. They want their buck. That's what they're there for. Make a buck. Um, before marriage, it was suggested to conduct a background check. You know, if you have the means, hire a private detective and, um, you know, get the, the dark side of the person. But now all you have to do is snag your betrothed, soon to be betrothed DNA and send it in and uh, come in with a report saying, oh, so you're not really a Rothschild as you're, as you're claiming that you are, um, you know, marriage off. 
Uh, now these sites exist for anyone to use as long as you have the money, you know, as long as you can fit the bill. So, um, yeah, this, this kind of takes, takes things to a whole new level in all seriousness. And, um, I guess you just need to ask yourself if you're, uh, dating someone or, you know, ball and chain, uh, married, you know, something a little bit more serious where it's harder to get out of. Um, do you really want to know if you're related? Do you really want to know if the person that you married is really, you know, not related to the parents? I mean, there's just all, all different types of permutations here. And uh, for all of you fiction or, hey, you know, nonfiction writers, <laughs> I'll give you this as a catalyst. I'd love to read more about it. Uh, let me know your comments at the very least on my website, whitenoiselevel3.wordpress.com. And please, please, please click on the donate link to help support this podcast and my two cats and two dogs that eat more than I do. Alrighty, well, happy Thanksgiving early, and we will talk soon. Bye-bye.